it doesn't necessarily give the best representation yeah. of men, women, yes. masculinity, yeah. femininity, and all the nuances in between both of those yeah. two. It's interesting because I was shocked by that. I don't need a man. I mean, obviously, I've been married for 10, 11 years, so I haven't really been out there dating. I understand the value of having a man within the household. Mm -hmm. I value marriage and all of these things. Even through my story, I could very much be trauma driven and say men are X and da da da. <laughs> but I don't want to do that. Let's talk DXB. Real conversations by real people. Manny, Corey, the men of mentality. I'm very excited to have you in the studio. Thank you so much for showing an interest, for supporting Let's Talk. This conversation is going to be, yeah, it's going to be great for me because I don't often see or hear men talking about very open, sometimes vulnerable topics. Mm. And you guys are on a mission to change that narrative and you're doing it fantastically. So thank you so much. Thanks for, for having, us. having us. Great. Well, Manny, we go back a little bit. So little we've got bit. some history, but Corey, it's my first time meeting you. And I always like to start with the guests because it's about them. So tell me a bit more about Corey. That would be, yeah, that would be really helpful. All right. So my name's Corey. Um, I find it somewhat difficult to summate myself in like formal terms. Okay, yes. Um, but one thing I would say, as I'm a guy yeah. <laughs> with some opinions mm. um, and I'm not afraid to share those opinions. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, I'm hoping that it inspires people to be better versions of themselves. Uh, as per what I do day to day, obviously yeah. co-founder of Mentality, yes. uh, founder of Perfect, which is a, a fitness and lifestyle brand mm. um, with, with a similar goal. And, and I would say all of the initiatives I'm involved with kind of have a similar goal of inspiring people yeah. or giving them the tools to make informed decisions about their life. So that's fitness oriented and a uh, creative studio that me and my missus do, which is another cool thing. Whoa, yeah. you're busy then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, relatively yeah, busy. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting because like I said, it's 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 always goes goes back to that. It always goes back to inspiring people, galvanizing yeah. them, um, giving them their sovereignty back, yeah. right? You know, yeah. it's really showing them their power. So everything we do is kind of veered in in that sort of orientation. So fantastic. Yeah. And then what brought you to Dubai then? I know it's a classic expat question, but <laughs> how did you end up in Dubai? Well, I was a personal trainer in in the UK yeah. before I moved out here and I trained some clients who was go back and forth yeah. from Dubai and, and London, which is very typical of, yeah. you know, the, <laughs> the, the quintessential Dubai entrepreneur, right? Yeah. Um, and it just sparked my interest. Mm. I didn't really heard much of the UAE or the region at the time. Okay. Um, and then I just went out there just to check it out um, by myself, went out there in 2017 okay. for a week, stayed out there and literally was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to settle here and make this home. So a massive gap in the market. I was like, people out here, there's a lot of opportunity. Everyone's chilling. Everyone's coasting. Let's come in here. Like, Put a put a uh, you know yeah. a sign a sign uh, flag in the yeah. ground and kind of build something and then the year later I moved out here. Fantastic! And yeah. you saw it earlier. I had this conversation with someone. I mean, I've been here ten years. Mm. I think Manny, when we uh, reconnected, I was like, I wish I was this aggressive. Probably when I first came mm. to Dubai, I was scoping mm. it out, having mm. fun. Obviously, they're married, family, kids. <laughs> but you came with the right mindset because those mm. those days were so much opportunity. So yeah, mm. it's good that you came with that energy and yeah. it's, it's paying yeah. off. So yeah, yeah, well no, done. definitely, definitely. Yeah. All right, Manny. So we've connected. I realise that there's probably a lot that I still don't know about you, actually. <laughs> so let's take a step back sure. and yeah, tell me a bit more about sure. Manny. Um, like Corey, I'm just a guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very humble, um, man. I like it. <laughs> no, I, I, look, I, I, there's lots of different faces or caps that I, I wear. Yeah. Um, depending on what needs to happen. Mm. And I say that all these different faces and facets of, of Manny make who I am, mm. right? So there's Manny, the businessman. Yeah. Then there's Manny, the mentality person who has a story to tell and who's taken my story out to try and encourage other people mm. that there, you know, you can get out. Yeah. There are people like us who are here to help you, guide you, have conversations with you. That's, what, that's where it starts, right? Yeah. It starts with a conversation. conversation yeah. There's Manny the family man. Mm. There's Manny the the uh, entrepreneur. Mm. There's Manny the, the, I don't know, the socialite, if you yeah. want to call it that. So there's lots of different facets. So yeah. to, to say that, or to describe myself um, becomes 
becomes yeah. tough. It depends on who you are to me yeah. and how you know me. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that makes sense completely. And you've been here maybe 10, 11 I've years I've been now? 10 years. Yeah. I'm in my 11th year yeah. now. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And the journey obviously has taken lots of different roads, turns. I'm sure. But we'll it's get into that as turns, well. Yeah. yeah. So let's start with mentality. Because, um, again, like I said, I have not seen men speaking so openly and honestly mm. about topics that a lot of men probably would shy away from. Um, so what made you guys start this? Like, yeah, where did this come from, this passion? It's a humble conversation. Literally. That was literally all that kind of forged the initial mentality right. vision. Mm. Yep. Um, I'd often go to Manny's house mm -hmm. after training um, and we'd just chop it up. We'd just speak and we'd get into like these deep conversations mm -hmm. about okay. various topics, yeah. but often pertaining to men. Yeah. And we're like, we should have recorded that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's value you know? in these conversations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's what kind of spearheaded mm. the initial mentality um, kind of vision. Okay. Yeah. Because in essence, we was thinking, imagine if someone could be a fly on the wall mm. for this conversation. Mm -hmm. mm. And then that's where we decided to, you know, the Instagram lives, yep. the podcast, mm. the event. It, it was all just a beautiful segue out of just simple conversations. Yeah. I, think, mm. I think in addition to that, the conversations that Corey and I used to have were healing for me okay tell me um, why yeah i i on the lead up to that had gone through several twists and turns in, right. in my life and i'd realized that i didn't have a community as every successful mm. person that comes mm. out of here and then i found in corey um, a younger version of the aspirational right. me yeah and i was like this guy gets it yeah and so it was healing for me to sit down and have these conversations. Mm. And I'd come away from these conversations edified and literally would walk away from it. And it's like, ah, yeah. we, need yeah. to, we need to feed yes. people this. Yes. People yes. need this. Yeah. Mm. People need this. And then it was people need this, people need this. And then it became, let's record the first. Mm. In fact, it wasn't even let's record it. We just sat there. It was like, listen, we talk about this. Just put the phones yeah. up and just yeah. do yeah, it. it and it was weird in the beginning, having a phone, because we was all just like so conscious of, of it being that, there, right? Yeah. Around, yeah. And it just felt a bit strange. But yeah. then the more we practice it, the yes. more we yeah. kind of sharpened our tools, just made it very seamless. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the topics are fantastic. And I think definitely the point of it being healing, because I think having, you know, that brotherhood or friendship where you feel safe mm. to be able to be vulnerable or you know just talk about women or challenges or whatever mm. it may be that is fantastic because don't tell him that i've never told him that he's never heard that version of it before oh really no he hasn't why <laughs> <laughs> because usually when we have these conversations as corey um said earlier it's always very kind of topic driven yeah, yeah so we okay. never get into it right um he knows that in terms of value he's yeah. somebody whose opinion i value mm. a lot so, but he's never heard that version of it. Brilliant. But I think being in a situation like that, we're never, and with him mm. as well, we're never ashamed to yes. voice out mm. exactly what it is, right? Okay. So it's very easy for me to say it was healing for me because it was. Yeah. It was yeah. yeah. But it takes a certain type of man because a lot of men, it's a facade, right? Like I don't hear a lot of men being that open to say mm. I was going through a difficult time and having someone that I value and trust was healing for me. You know, I, I still don't hear those narratives openly. So I think it takes a certain type of guy to be able to do the that. It's the purpose of what we do. Yeah. That's the whole point yeah. of mentality, to make it okay to yeah. be able to have these kind of conversations mm. from an unprejudiced, unjudged yep. um, position. Yeah. There's yeah. Yeah. yeah, you have to put your moral compasses down. Mm. I think that's the biggest thing that yeah. acts as a detractor for men sharing True. their opinions, right? Mm. Because ultimately they feel judged. Yes. Right. Yeah. Or they they kind of skip past the initial, as you as mm. you mentioned, healing phase and get straight to solution Correct. orientation. Yeah. And I've definitely been guilty of that. Okay. You know, so sometimes you've got to sit in that and feel and then and then it helps you to build a natural roadmap yes. yep. as to where it is you want to go. But it starts with a conversation. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. And speaking of conversations, because I always do my research. So literally I've spent the previous weekend just listening to your content and mm. watching it, which is fantastic. Mm. It's so varied as well. Uh, you did the natural the Dubai, Dubai, I hope I've called it properly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love that conversation. Okay. It was obviously you had a balanced men and women, yeah. different backgrounds. It was super diverse. And one of the areas that I took from it was this title of being a man. And I'm, <laughs> I know it's, it's a loaded, very kind of broad uh, conversation, but there were so many different opinions around mm. it. Um, I say that for myself personally. I'm now a single mom raising a three-year-old to be a man. Mm. And it terrifies me. I was on Helen Farmer and I said this quite openly. 
because there's only so far that I can take my son and there's only so much that I know as a woman. And obviously there's an imbalance in the home. He's seeing his mother take out garbage, cook mm. food, bathe in, make sure that I'm resourceful, mm. fixing his toys, arguing with maintenance. Mm. So I'm very mindful of, you know, what his perception growing up may look like as he grows to be a man and how I can be a bit more aware of, you know, fixing that imbalance where possible or educating myself. Mm. So I'm going to ask you a very wide uh, question, which you probably <laughs> have talked about a lot, but what does it mean to you guys to be a man? Like, where's your representation come from? But it, what is this, like, the gender roles? Do you still believe in them? Have they shifted? That would be good to know a bit more. Mm. It's very loaded. It's very loaded. <laughs> it's, very, it's very loaded. But I think um, at its bare bones, it's someone who lives by their own agency mm. and stands by their own convictions. Okay. I think that's the bare bones mm. of it because ultimately as men, we are, you know, providers, protectors, If at least if you ascribe to the typical tenets of what it is to yeah, be a man. Yeah, yeah. And those tenets and values, as much as a lot of them are going to be driven by society, mm. you're going to have your own that you hold very dear to you. Maybe they're religiously anchored, yeah. maybe they're culturally anchored. Mm. So it's going to look very different from man to man. Okay. Now, one of the issues I see nowadays is that this group think is clad in the entire manosphere yes. mm -hmm. yeah. and it's losing individuality and what serves me mm -hmm. might not serve Manny and right. his and his nuclear family so I think that's where I'd kind of start with regards to what it is to mm -hmm. be a man it's standing by your own convictions yeah. um and kind of really living by them mm. and know and also being malleable in that as well yeah. because they might change over time yeah. you're going to go through many iterations like mm. me I'm, I'm you know I'm in a relationship but I'm not married yes. so what happens when I get married yes. and then what happens when I have uh, you know a son okay. or a daughter yep. it, so you've got to be also malleable in that sense but I think there's this idea of this being this very monolithic mm. thinking around what it is to be a man but and there are tenets that are very like you know etched yep. in stone yep. but it looks very different from man to man but in your upbringing then Corey if you don't mind me digging a bit a mm. bit more kind of what was your representation of that male figure if it was there if it was not like as you were growing maybe into teenagehood to mm. then adulthood mm. what have you seen in terms of what a typical man should be now obviously you you can make choices and you're probably more aware of mm. what you you Corey as a man stands for and what that means for mm. you but I always think obviously whatever you see in the home, it starts from there until then 100%. you mix with different friends and yeah. society comes in and all of these other pressures. But what has your representation been up until where you could make conscious decisions about what this means to you? You know what? I had two dads. So oh, okay. I have my biological dad yep. and then I have my stepdad okay. and I both consider them my fathers oh, fantastic. Um, in very different ways mm. um, we are all Leo so I don't know if that says something <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. um, but we're, we're kind of I think I'm a perfect compilation between my, my dad and my stepdad oh, great. my dad was a bit of a gangster mm. he was a rude boy he was like he he, he didn't necessarily manage to um, kind of take his, himself and mm. kind of apply himself to a worthy ideal that energy Got just it. was very fragmented right. and dispersed okay. um Wayne my stepdad was martial artist was a very kind man but also still had that strong yeah. masculine mm -hmm. archetype um he's the one who taught me martial arts he's the one who taught me about reading and and was very learned mm. he, he he could be you know can speak Amharic he right. was deep into like many different uh spiritual kind of teachings yep. and and things of that nature so i think i became the perfect balance of those yeah. two things because i have my dad's tendency to mm. genetically yes yeah. um when i look at my dad it's like looking at myself like you, and sometimes yeah. we don't <laughs> see our time we clash you and clash. i understand why yes, yep. you know um and i love my dad yes. and my stepdad was is also i also see myself uh in in or see see mm. um him in myself and i kind of see how he kind of gave me the he was a yin to my yes, yang yeah. energy um so it was a perfect balance mm. and what I kind of saw was two things that were somewhat juxtaposed yes but it made for a beautiful balance because I spent most of the time in you know in my in my household yeah. where my stepdad was yes, living yeah and he's a I would say like an unassuming man mm. um because on the outside uh may even be considered not even i wouldn't use the word meek but i would say more mild Got mannered it. yeah um but he's a he's a tough man yeah okay. you know so he kind of taught me that balance nice. he, he taught me that tender aggressive nature he taught me um how to kind of 
uh, again, galvanized mm. people and moved them in a certain direction yeah. without even saying anything. Yeah. So I would say all of the things I mentioned mm. before um, and so many more things mm. were just represented to me in the household. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think the, the, the balance of those two sides... I feel like I've integrated them quite well. Yeah. So that's yeah. a blessing as well. Because 100%. sometimes when you've got two different maybe personality types, mm. it can cause confusion maybe mm. when you're young mm. because you've got this personality and mm. then also in the household it's something else. Mm. So trying to find your identity within mm. that. But it seems like it's it's merged together really well. Yeah, they create space for that. Yeah. Ultimately. Um I didn't live in a very authoritative household okay. where it's like you have to be yeah. this way. Yeah. I was very much trusted. Yeah, good. Um it was like, okay. Even, even, I always say, even in like the worst time, even in when I made my worst decisions, mm. I could still seek their counsel. Oh, wow. And wasn't, it wasn't like a dictatorship, like you have to be this way. Yeah. So, okay, cool. You're going to make this decision regardless of what I say. Yeah. Here's some things to consider. Make your own informed decision, yeah. which naturally leads to you making a bunch of decisions, Correct. building competency, yeah. which leads them to confidence, right? Yes. So, I, I, I'm grateful that I had mm. that and I understand that, you know, in the conversations, Manny and I have, yeah. and just with our, with our wider cohort yep. of men, that that's not no. very common. Yeah, no. Yeah, so I'm, I'm blessed in that sense. Great. And how about you then, Manny? How about me? What's the question? The question is, in terms of your representation of what a, a man mm. uh, from a young age, I would say, because obviously mm. you're a man, you're a father, now you're a husband. What mm. did that look like when you were young in your upbringing? Has that influenced you now? Um, yes, I think it has. Uh, so I grew up with both a male and a female figure in the mm -hmm. household. So my mum was there, my stepdad was there. Mm -hmm. um, my biological father passed away very, very young. Okay. Um, my There were difficulties in the house because yeah. you're always trying to navigate uh, a landscape where yeah. uh, you, know, you, you have different ideals mm -hmm. or different needs. Mm -hmm. um, and then as you grow, sometimes in a, in a household, there might be a clash of, not personalities, but... I, um, a clash of, of ideas, yeah. if you want to call it that. Um, not saying that my, my step, my step, that was wonderful. Mm -hmm. He was he was awesome. But we always didn't look yeah. at life from the same lens. Yeah. Um, mostly because I was a teenager and I was, I was trying, to, trying to understand yes. what life what life was. And growing up in an African household, very mm -hmm. much, very different to, to Corey's experience. Right, it was yeah. very dictatorship led. Yes. It's like, you yes. must do it like this. This is how it's yes. done, and if you just straight away from this path, even even sometimes till now, like I get frustrations of having conversations because it's like you don't see it. Yeah, you don't, and and it's like no, but this is how and I'm like no, the world yeah, has changed. It's changed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but it's influenced me, and it, mm -hmm. and it's really given me the tools with which to navigate life. I'd say it's influenced me very very positively in terms of understanding what it takes to be resilient yeah i saw sheer resilience okay. and hard work yeah. growing up mm. um and and that's what's fueled me yeah. it's this innate understanding of okay listen you can get maybe 70 80 percent of the mm -hmm. way just by hard work yes the rest of it uh, you have to pray to, to, to the powers yeah, above exactly um so that that's um something that's influenced me um it's also influenced me in terms of having my own family because mm. there are learnings that I've got yeah. um, that I now kind of translate into raising okay. my son. Yeah. Because there are things that I would do differently. Okay. Because of the way I viewed life. Yeah. Now I'm not saying I may be right or wrong mm. in that respect, but because of the way I viewed life, there are things, there are approaches that I would take okay. differently. Um, in my household, vulnerability wasn't a thing. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. You you have to bite down and yes. just get it done. Yeah. Um, but I also understand the impact that that had on me later on in life. Because when I was at my weakest, mm -hmm. I had nowhere to turn. Mm -hmm. um, because my idea was bite down and get it done. Yeah. And so when I was broken, mm. it felt, it was an embarrassment to go and speak to Mm -hmm. the family and tell them listen yeah. i'm i'm not feeling good not yeah. that physically financially everything was great mentally. i was doing well but mentally yes. i was broken yeah and i couldn't go and you talk to speak them about it. and mm -hmm. i couldn't talk to my friends and i couldn't talk to my colleagues mm -hmm. and i couldn't talk to anyone else yeah so then what do you do but what was that outlet then because then you're internal like you're screaming internally which is quite dangerous 
in, initially the outlet was football, was sports. Okay, fine. Football and gym. Okay. And I threw myself at it. Yeah. But that can only take you so yeah, far, of course. right? Um, because football's great, but you're talking 180 minutes, yes. like 90 minutes of a game, and then the, the hour before, the hour afterwards, yeah. and then you're back to reality within the four walls of, yeah. of darkness again. Yeah. Um, same thing with gym. You can go mm-hmm. to the gym and do two hours of just battering your body, yep. but then the walls start closing in. Mm-hmm. Um, so it ultimately culminated in in. Um, me finding myself in a very dark space okay. Uh, okay. and and me trying to shut the doors mm. to the world. Yeah. Um, and that was when I realized that there was a problem. Yeah, okay. And that's when I realized that there weren't many places to yes. go and talk about yes. the problem or to seek help. Yep. And so I sat in it. I mm. sat in it, I sat in it, I sat in it. And then I found Corey and we mm. started having conversations and like I said, I, I started to get my healing. I started yes. to understand that there was purpose yep. in building mm. forums and spaces where people can come together and yeah. have these conversations. And just through just conversations about life, yeah. about life, mm. about work, about books, about mentality. Again. Yes, that's fantastic. And it's good. That I, the reason why I touched on like childhood, because they always say, I mean, I've been doing therapy since I realized that my marriage was, you know, it wasn't going to go to the end. It wasn't the fairy tale. And I filed for divorce. I started therapy for the first time ever. Probably should have done it years ago. I've mm. been through grief. I've lost my dad. There's so many factors. But what I was mindful of is also I'm raising a, a child and they absorb at such Correct. a young age. I would have absorbed at such a young age. And I intentionally did an episode with a child psychologist, mm. Anuja, around parenting. Like I said, I'm always reading and trying to be mindful about raising kids and I, my mum if you watch this she'll roll her eyes and say it's some new age mum because it was quite similar you know mm. it was quite uh dictative you do as you're told african household be that perfect child mm. go to school don't you know don't rock the boat and we didn't have a space even as a woman we have three three girls very strong mother and my dad was present in the house but for me for sure i was the one that had to be the strong child so when i when if there was times where i felt like i needed support i wouldn't mm. vocalize mm. And obviously now I'm raising a boy and a lot of that narrative is boys don't cry, be a strong boy. And I'm, <laughs> I never use that language at home because I want my son to be able to feel vulnerable at a young age and hopefully be balanced as he grows. Because otherwise it can be quite tough when you become an adult and that's all you've known and you feel like you can't even go home, which should be the safety net to say, I'm feeling low or I'm struggling with depression or, you know, my heart is broken. So I think it's important to to realise that. So that's why I wanted to touch on Mm. like upbringing to see very balanced men sitting in front of me. I think it's really impressive, actually, that you've been able to navigate different dynamics. Yeah, I think the core is, is, as as Corey said earlier, no pun intended, um, is is the solution orientation. We open conversations Mm. so that people can realise, okay, well, admit that, this is the starting yeah. point, yeah. but understand that this is not where it's going to end. Correct. Right. And and through conversation, we'll find <laughs> angles, we'll find yes. things, we'll find help. Yeah. Um, this is why mentality is not just a podcast. There's mm. there's four pillars to it, yeah. and there are pillars that draw people together. Mm. There are pillars that build community. There are pillars that give content to people to yes. engage the conversation, yeah. and then there are pillars that actually help people seek the help yeah. that they need. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and That's the great. conversation is kind of a, a signpost as to just rest recognition that there's mm. actually an issue, yes. right? Because yep. a lot of men live in denial. Yes, They don't want to voice mm-hmm. those um, internal dialogues mm. that are happening yeah. perpetually, yep. which are kind of eating away at them Correct. gradually. So yeah. just by voicing it or saying it, acknowledging it, mm. in essence, mm. gives you the kind of, you know, it, it starts the journey yes. of healing. But if you don't say anything, then where do you go from there? And why do you think that is? Because obviously you would come across a big network of men, I assume in what you do. Why do you think it is that men have this thing of, I can't be vulnerable, I can't show? <laughs> I mean, there's always that kind of, everyone's like, you have to be strong, you have to be seen as a man. But if we, if, is it quite more, is it more deep rooted, are you finding? Or is it literally just like, I can't put myself out there in that way, I'm too embarrassed? Have you mm. noticed like a pattern when it comes to men being quite closed off with their emotions or their challenges? 
I think it's ego driven. Mm, okay. You know, yeah. every man's trying to be the top dog. Right, a okay. man's <laughs> life is inherently very competitive. Right. Mm. And I think any sign of weakness is mm. seen as a chink in armor. Okay. Um, and, and I kind of understand where that comes from, especially when you come from environments like where Manny and I grew mm. up in, mm-hmm. um, where any sign of vulnerability, any sign of uh, emotional um, weakness okay. yeah. is, you know, you, it will be exploited immediately. Right. So you build up this, this strong, masculine archetype okay. and you don't sway away from that you yeah. don't know how to you know be like water right you mm. don't know how to be malleable and you kind of take that veneer into all environments but yeah. you know think of like a very hard and like uh, i don't know substance yeah if you throw it against a certain another harder substance it's sort of cast a break yes, right so correct. that's that's in essence what i see but i, I understand where it comes from mm. um and I think men just need to acknowledge that it mm. isn't always the way to be. And this very binary thinking mm. is is not going to serve you in in all different kind of yeah. lines and yeah. of life. I think um, I think so. I've, I, I've done quite a bit of reading on this, and I think it depends also on your uh, cultural and societal mm. True. inclinations as well. Um, when I look at some of my uh, Western friends, if we put it that way. Mm. Um, they are in environments where they're allowed to be more expressive, yeah. mm. and they're allowed to speak more, yep. and they're allowed to talk about how they feel more. And but with that being said, the, the, you know, kind of to, mm. to retrace my steps a little bit, a lot of, especially with with black um, people, if mm. you want to call it that, um, or people of black origin, a lot of the way we are comes stems from slavery, mm. um, and the fact that there had to be survival, mm. right? Um, so. Slavery, the slavery aspect is, and the whole vulnerable, you have to be strong, men don't cry thing, Mm. stems a lot from the fact that men had to go out and work. Mm. And so if you were seen as weak, you were killed off Mm. because you were not efficient, you were Mm. not fit for purpose. And so what a lot of Mm. mothers used to do is they would tell their kids, listen, you can't cry, you can't do anything. And then the mothers will suffer a lot. And so we Mm. created a generations yeah. of yes. um, very tough, mm. very kind of yeah, yeah. Um, emotionally um, or non-emotional women. Mm. And then the men had to kind of, you know, yeah. um, com- not compete, but had to work within work those with parameters. Them. And then as time has gone on, obviously slavery got abolished. Survival now, mm. it's like, okay, from a point of, okay, well, I have to get ahead you're battling against other people within your same community yeah. to be the strongest, the richest, the toughest, because you then it, you, you go up mm. in society yeah, and the true. higher up in society, the mm. better it is for you and your offspring to survive. Mm. And that has just trickled down to yeah. us who grew up in Brixton and yeah. Croydon. Yeah, it's and crazy how that generational yeah. effect, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's internalized. True. It causes a plethora of other things Correct. as well. You even think about like the, you know, the mother being, um, I don't know if you will, emotionally neutered yes, towards yeah, her son. Yes. There's a mother wound there. Yes. And what does that naturally lead towards, you know, womanizing behavior, yes, correct? Yeah. And we've obviously got all the raw materials to be the yes. perfect womanizers, <laughs> right? And then mm. you couple that with, um, you know, an insecurity mm. or a lack of emotional availability from yeah. your mother. And then it that leads to infidelity, yes. and, uh, broken marriages mm. or, or, you know, just, just uh, children out of wedlock yes. and, mm. and all these other societal issues that, you know, mm. are, are very prevalent in, in black and also other ethnic uh, yeah. communities. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. It's actually interesting because you touched on like in terms of the woman and being quite harsh or mm. tough. And yes, it's, it's very much prominent within our community, but also other communities, mm. depending on trauma or Correct. upbringing. Yeah. So this is something that I'm trying to be more mindful of because obviously I'm paying both roles. And even I think in my marriage as well, I, I probably should have been more mindful of it within my marriage in terms of it being more balanced um, mm. in terms of gender roles and expectations. But now I'm, I'm fully in like survival <laughs> mode. So if I need to take out the rubbish, I would. If I need to get my car washed, if I need to fight with the mechanic, I'm doing that mm-hmm. all. But in terms of like female energy and femininity for men, because I hear this a lot, um, 
obviously I haven't dated or I haven't been dating for a long time, but a lot of the, the stories that I hear from my community is this guy thinks I'm too harsh, I'm too independent, I need to bring my female energy. I still probably don't even really know what that means for mm. me. But what are you seeing in, th in that regard as a man in terms of women that are quite strong or neutered or not, you know, not emotionally intelligent, all of these dynamics? I think so. Um, no, 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 please. I think please. I think we 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 live in a world where um, there's a there's a difference between being emotionally neutered and being emotionally unconscious. Mm, true. Right, and I say that to say this is that you can see the emotionally neutered mm. people, and and they're trying. Yeah. It's not that they're not trying; they're trying, but it's survival. Yeah. And then the emotionally unconscious are those that are operating in a world of I don't need. A man, I can do it all by myself, right? Are you hearing that as well? Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Absolutely. We, need to get into we this. actually did oh. a we did a we did a yeah, whole did podcast a, on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I don't um, need a man. Yeah, I don't need yeah. a man. Okay. Um, and and it's because of this. I call it new age feminism, mm, okay. where people have strayed so far away from understanding the feminist cause mm. and understanding how to find power within their own feminism yeah. or, or within the, their feminine yeah. feminine traits that. They just it, they just become um, what's the word I'm looking for? They they close their eyes they to it. They become eyes. unconscious. Yeah. Okay. To the fact that there's power in in in, fem, in being feminine. Mm. There's mm. huge power in, fem, mm. in being feminine, and so there's a difference between the two. So right. the question when when you ask the question yeah. of okay, which one is it or yeah. what? We're hearing a lot, and we're seeing a lot. Right. But we we can and, and as men, I guess I can. Sp I'll speak for myself. Yeah. When I say we can see when somebody's. Um, uh, product of being mm. emotionally neuted right. yeah. it's easy For to sure. see it is yes yeah. because you can see that woman's trying she's trying she wants to do well she's doing Got the best it. for her and her children yeah. yes as opposed to the ones that are constantly just shutting down the door and saying no men are trash i don't need a man i can do it on but myself that's trauma I can... driven then yeah if i'm a woman i'm, I'm saying that because not i've always. been hurt not always mm. Um, not always, and uh, sorry, Corey, I know you want to say something. Um, not always, because sometimes it's not trauma that drives it. Sometimes it's learned behavior. True. You know, if you grow up in a household where all you hear mm. is men ain't, I don't yeah, know if I can yeah, curse. Yes, but, yeah. um, um, yeah. That's all you're ever going to be true. able to look out for. Mm. And so you always hear the paradox of the, the two children. You can either go the way of what you see yeah. and hear and experience, yeah. or you can go the opposite. Yeah. Most children, even when they're trying to go the opposite, can only recognize the triggers yes. that's of what it known. is. And so, in as much as they want to run away from it, yeah. they're still getting drawn to it magnetically. Yeah, that's a valid mm. point. Yeah, yeah and with, with, as it pertains to feminine energy, I think <laughs> we've conflated this idea of mm. men and women being the same. Yeah. Mm. And masculine and feminine energy exists within both of us. Mm but it leads to an off kilt with yeah. the way that masculine and feminine energy is expressed. Mm -hmm. Because most people are operating out of fear, right? They're yeah. operating out of lack. They're, they're operating out of this lower frequency. Mm -hmm. And that leads to femininity or masculinity manifesting itself in ways that are toxic, yeah. right? Um, and I think that's the main issue. issue. So when we speak about mm -hmm. women saying, I don't need a man, for example, mm -hmm. and the internalized trauma that maybe comes from, you know, a single parent household yeah. or, or a woman that's scorned by the dad and yeah. um, uh, speaks ill of him in front of the daughter and, mm -hmm. and how she internalizes that. And then she goes into the world, looking at the world yeah. through that lens. Mm -hmm. um, and then it gets perpetuated in society, mm -hmm. right? But that narrative, I was saying that, that kind of idea is the only sort of ideas we've seen that are perpetuated nowadays and right. it, it's overinflated. Yeah. Um, because obviously, you know, drama sells, right? So yeah. these sorts of headlines, these sorts of mm -hmm. taglines get the most attention. Mm -hmm. um, and then actually with mentality and putting our ears at ground mm -hmm. level, we realise mm -hmm. that that's just still a small cohort of people. Right. And it's not, uh, it doesn't necessarily give the best representation yeah. of Men, women, yes, masculinity, yep. femininity, and all the nuances in between both of those yeah. two. Yeah, 
It's interesting because I was shocked by that. I don't need a man. I mean, obviously, I've been married for 10, 11 years, so I haven't really been out there dating. I understand the value of having a man within the household. Mm -hmm. I value marriage and all of these things. Even through my story, I could very much be trauma driven and say men are X and da da da. (laughs) But I don't want to do that because obviously, if I look back at it and if I'm really studying the situation, there's lessons learned from me, my behavior as well, but equally my ex husbands and where it's driven from and the trauma that was maybe fed into our marriage that we didn't address. So there's so many different dynamics, but I could never sit there and say, I don't need a man. Yes, I'm in a situation where I know I can survive without a man because Mm -hmm. you have to, right? Mm -hmm. I know I can be resourceful, pay my bills, look Mm -hmm. after my child, but I do definitely value what, you know, having a man in the household and and two people, two brains even, Mm -hmm. just to be able to strategize Mm -hmm. and plan. So it's interesting that 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 narrative is out there and I'm out of the dating game. So that's why I I know nothing (laughs) about any of this. So I find that quite interesting that that is, yeah, that, yeah, that narrative is there. It's these two ideas that are pushed and, and it's really the one in the middle we should be looking mm. at, right? You've got independent yeah. and you've got codependent. Yes, yeah. And people are either in one or two, one, yeah. one of those two That's frames mm. when really you need inter- to the interdependence, right? Yep. You need the, the combination of those two minds mm. and, you know, the masculine and the feminine, the, the man and the woman, right? We, yeah. we, are, we are kind of made for each other, right? Yes. We are the perfect yeah. kind of, you know, puzzle pieces. Mm. And I feel like when you see one overrepresented or one just completely mm. non-existence that's when the issues start Correct. to arise yeah you know and even to hear you talk about you know you know recognizing that i'm a single parent mm. and raising a young son and he needs to be around that masculine yeah. injury is quite refreshing because you know a lot of women go the other way and they say you know what i don't need it i can i'm fully autonomous mm-hmm. and the autonomy is not enough because in in many you know women that are not learned yes, uh, yep. like yourself they they look at that and they're not wearing both hats. Yeah. But what are you teaching that young man? That's my fear. You're teaching him to, to expect that from a woman mm-hmm. and then it's going to move him out of mm-hmm. his masculine Correct. frame. And he's going to be looking for another mother yes. in his woman as opposed to, you know, a partner yes, or yeah. a wife yeah. and things of that nature. And that's what scares me, actually, because I'm fully mindful of, like, I have friends and they speak openly about it. But, you know, they've married maybe a man that's come from a single parent household, the mother doing it all and expecting his wife to be resourceful, work, pay mm-hmm. bills, clean, mm-hmm. good. like, but there's a, it's mm-hmm. only one person. I think even yeah. for men, right? If you marry someone and their expectations of, I want to be looked after and I don't want to do anything. Mm-hmm. I don't even want to bring my brain to the relationship. Mm-hmm. It's exhausting for one person. So I want to teach my son that, yes, I'm doing it and that's what you see, but equally there are great men out there that can do it and you should learn how to be resourceful for yourself mm-hmm. and know how to manage and grow to be responsible. But it's mm-hmm. it's a huge job. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, a huge yeah, job. Yeah. And kudos to you for doing it. Um, but definitely yeah, show him strong representation of, mm. of good men, good yes. men that are like him yes. or that yeah. like he could be. Mm. You know, and you can, there are, and and and. They're around and they may even even when they're not physically around, there's lots of things that you can find through mediums yes. where he can see good yeah. men behaving well, yeah. looking after the women, being chivalrous, being providers, being protectors, mm-hmm. not overtly over aggressive in their nature. Yes. Yeah. You know, just a careful balance of everything. Yeah. And yeah. they are there. Yeah. yeah. Most certainly. My my stepdad played a key, oh. a, a key and pivotal role mm. in the taekwondo students yes right because yeah. we had a taekwondo school and a lot of the the boys that came there came mm. from single parent households so the mum would come and drop them and you yep. could almost see how he became like uh you know a surrogate father to those mm. to those young men yeah. and how even the women would come to him and and seek seek counsel yes. and it it was it was a so it was a so instrumental in their lives, especially yep. growing up again in, in Brixton. Yes. Our, our our class was literally in Brixton Recreation wow. Centre, which okay. is the the heartbeat and pulse of Brixton, (laughs) right? So it's in the middle of like what we call the ghetto, right? Um, And just to see that was amazing and Mm. see how some of them, you know, would start to veer in the right direction, went on to go to university Mm. and and have, you know, positive relationships. Mm. And to see them go from, you know, boys just into young men was was truly amazing yeah i think community is key and i'm very mindful of that so um i'm a christian so church I, I put uh, zane's in sunday school and there's there's great examples around but i'm intentionally doing that mm. just so you know he can see that and also just building community of men and women same faith etc yeah. but it takes a lot of effort you have to be intentional i think as well faith is a faith is a huge thing that's played in me being able to get through life However, 
Mm. Let's let's be yeah. let's let me bring that up since since you yeah. touched on it. There needs to be a careful understanding. Good point. That there's a difference between faith mm. and religion. Yeah. And the reason I say that is this, right? I grew up in the church. I went all, okay. all my years yep. through the church. Yep. I used to sing in the church. I used to lead praise and worship. I used to be an instrumentalist. I there was a point in life when I used to spend more time mm. at my pastor's house than I did at ah, my house. Okay. However, yeah. two things happened. The first was that I started to develop ideas mm. and doctrines mm -hmm. that were not my own. Mm -hmm. that were not doctrines that, that drew me closer to God. They were doctrines that put me into line. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Mm. And it was only when I started to understand that faith is about a relationship. Yes. With God. Yep. Not the rules you follow. Yeah. Yeah. And because of the relationship with God, mm -hmm. you will fall in line with certain rules. Yes. Because you understand that it's important to have certain boundaries mm to your relationship, yeah. any relationship yeah. you may have. Um, and that's when my faith started to skyrocket. Got it. That's also when my community started disappearing. Yeah, it would do. Because now I wasn't falling in line You're with what everyone was yeah. correct. So I say that to say this, community is great. Mm. Strong understanding of who you are within that community is yeah. even better. Yeah, and yeah. I'm a big believer of that as well because I think also it's quite easy if we think about religion. You, you can quite easily just conform, like you said, follow the rules, and if not, you find that mm -hmm. it dwindles out. So I'm very intentional around who I put around mm -hmm. myself and my son. Mm -hmm. Like it's not a oh we're all Christians, so you must just listen Correct. to this person. But equally, just having the foundation of Sunday school. They're yeah. young. Yes. They you know yes. they do very kind of innocent things there, mm -hmm. but. Even the discipline that every Sunday, this You're is what we're going to do Correct. and it's important. Correct. Yeah, but as yeah. he grows, for sure, I'm militant. <laughs> <laughs> the energy I have around me and my child. Yeah, important. So, yeah, but it's very it's very good advice, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd actually like to piggyback off that point mm. because it's very important because, uh, you know, you know, very pious environments can start to breed yes. this idea of obedience. Mm. And actually a religion should be, because I'm not a religious person, okay. but I grew up in a Rastafarian household. Yeah, so, yeah. so it's kind of like an arm off of Christianity. Yes. You said you your, your stepdad taught you about spirituality. Yes, and yes, yes, yes. So yes, yes. Seen, yeah. and, and, and I'm a big proponent of what Manny's talking about, right. being being faith oriented, right? And when you think about religion, you know, you even go back to like etymology, mm -hmm. you know, re regalo, which yep. means to be bound by. Yep. Um, but when you're faith based, you naturally find that you live in a certain mm -hmm. way that is what I'd call mat, yes. right? Is is righteous, mm -hmm. a righteous way of living when yeah. you have a divine connection. Yeah. And if religion is the is your segue into that, mm -hmm. whether it's spirituality, whether it's mind, whatever that kind of looks like, um, is very, very important. Yeah. Right. And you find that like like Manny was saying, in a lot of these uh, very pious environments, mm -hmm. it's it, the antithesis of that. Yeah. It's the exact opposite. It's 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 fear driven. Yeah. And it's like I need to follow these rules mm -hmm. or else I'm gonna go to hell. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, but then that you lose the connection because mm -hmm. you cannot be connected from a from a place of fear. Yeah. Right. But um rather than authenticity or really wanting to build exactly. your relationship mm -hmm. yeah. from a genuine wanting place. To, wanting to have faith, yeah. wanting to have connection, actually yeah. communicate communicating with yes. your creator communicate yeah. with yeah. god you the, know the foundation of faith is love mm. Mm. Yeah. and the opposite of love is fear yeah mm. right so yeah. if if you're not operating from a place mm. of love mm. then are yeah. you really yeah where you should be yeah it's a right? good point actually yeah. so Oh, we have touched on so many things. I wanted to like wrap up just to learn a bit more about, you know, what's coming up. I saw on Instagram, you've got a dating uh, Insta Live, which Ooh. is going to, I'm sure that's going to be popular. <laughs> we probably don't have time to go into dating, yeah, but I'll, yeah. I'll definitely tune into that. But what else is coming up for Mentality? What, you know, what else are you guys looking to we, do? We've got an event <laughs> coming up um, titled oh, yes. Bridging the Pillow Gap. Yeah. Um, in October, dates yet to be confirmed, so, okay. so stay tuned. <laughs> Probably when this drops, the date will be confirmed, Correct. so you can Good. check it out on our Instagram page. Um, we do Instagram lives every two weeks. Yeah. Um, our next one being Dubai's dating dilemmas, yeah. and we're doing them a little bit more frequently now. Just okay. we've you know recently launched a chat with uh, yeah. a kind of Instagram live series okay. where we have more casual conversations yes. that are less kind of. Um, veered around a topic yeah, and, yeah. and we just kind of get to know people Good. and things of that nature but 
podcasts, events, yeah. Uh, yeah. community. There, yeah. There's so many things that we're doing here at Mentality. Yeah. That's great, yeah. And you're finding that a lot of men are joining, because it's men and women. I know you, you mm. sometimes bring in, you want the female opinions, I'm sure. But you find a lot of men are kind of warming to this yeah. space and wanting to be more open. I think there's a misconception that mentality is just men. Because yeah. that's what For I thought sure. <laughs> until we spoke. And I was like, oh, yeah. okay, it's it, different opinions and it voices. Is, yeah. It is heavily male-driven right. in the sense that when we started this, um, the foundational purpose of it was to allow a voice for men. Yeah. Because there are so many places, so many um, forums where women can go and speak, mm -hmm. where women do go yeah, and speak. Yeah, it's true. There's, there are not enough for men. Mm -hmm. But then in our journey, we also understood that there's a gap between yeah. men and women. Yeah. And mentality, even, even within a branding, pushes the idea of being able to bridge mm -hmm. that gap between men okay. and women and actually bring us together. Yeah. So we can harmoniously live as pillars yeah. of society. Yeah. So we are for both. We mm. are for both men and women. Um, however, we understand that men need yeah. what what yeah. we do, and so yeah. that's yeah. why that's why even in the name mentality, yeah. um, which we've now changed, yeah, <laughs> um, to mentality, to just mentality. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, it, okay. Yeah. Yeah. There used yes. to be men hyphen yeah, talent, yeah, okay. yeah. but now it's. Mentality. mentality yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah, we kind of did that to kind of clear any of the, you know, uh, confusion around yeah, what this you know, is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a good exactly. idea. And so, in essence, kind of go off of what Manny was saying. Mm. Um, it's, it's, we discuss issues that pertain to men. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of the issues that pertain to men also pertain to Correct. women. Yes. Um, and with, with us going straight for the, you know, the male orientation, mm. it's almost, I, I use the analogy of going into a burning building and right. someone's got third degree burns and mm. someone's got light burns. Yeah. You need to tend to one before yes. the other, right? Yeah. And with all of these, you know, very femme centric mm. forums and that kind of being um, uh, spearheaded within society, mm. we need to go and tend to the men yeah. who have been neglected with regards to mm. their voice. Mm. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's where mentality was formed. You're doing great things. I'm definitely going to be tuning in more and learning. I've learned so much already. So thank you so much for you know champion and having a voice around these topics and for bridging the gap because I feel like there's so many women out there that are still trying to learn a lot more from men as well to be yeah. able to get it right, whether it's the relationships or raising a, a boy, etc. So thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you, yes, for, having thank you for having us. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Let's talk DXB. Real conversations by real people.